Good evening and welcome to Football Friday Night alongside Jason Geyser. I'm Dave Ciseski. Track action to kick it off right down the road at Spartan Stadium. Well, I'm a senior and Oregon Clay waltz through pre-conference campaigns with 3-0 and records, but both are now coming off their first loss of the year as they go head-to-head -to -head tonight. Spartans looking to get their first conference win on the season. No better time than on homecoming. Taking on the Clay Eagles, both teams sitting at 3-1. and one. Now listen, defense, as we say, sets the tone, and that would be true here. First drive for Clay, and the Spartan defense is going to pick up a fumble. Xavion Garner is going to come out of this pile all the way for a house call. Makes a man miss, nothing but end zone ahead of him. All the way back for the Lima score. Feeling good on homecoming. Spartans elect to go for two. Aiden Howard calls his own name. He gets it for the keeper, 8 nothing. Now the offense did struggle to move the ball in the first, however, the defense, well, coming up big. Tavion James with the tackle here. He was big all night, stopping the running back. Same drive, Anthony Mosley. Let's say his name. He was big tonight. Gets the quarterback here. Nowhere to go. And so he's going to come home with the sex. Spartans. Spartans showing some speed there. Second quarter, trusted screenplay for Samarian Dowdy, who makes a few moves. However, the Clay would win this one 42-14. to Finley hoping for a home win tonight, hosting the 2-2 two and two Whitmer Panthers from Toledo. First quarter, Whitmer's ball, Brady Ford. Quick drop here in this first drive, and he's going to launch this ball down the field, connects with a wide open Devin Morgan in stride, 44-yard touchdown. They go up 7-0. Later, Whitmer ball again, and this might be the best catch of the year. Mark it down for Ford throws back of the end zone to Corval Morgan, one-handed snag for the score. Odell Beckham there. Finley will get their offense moving, though. Here's Ryan Montgomery with a tough touchdown run. But it was all Whitmer tonight. Panthers win this one 38-14. And now we throw it over to Tony Quatch, who has more from Columbus Grove and Allen East. Thanks, David. It's been a back-and-forth affair between the Allen East Mustangs and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. In the last nine meetings between the two, the Bulldogs edge out the Mustangs five games to four. The Dogs have taken four of the last five meetings against the Mustangs, and both teams are eyeing their fourth win of the season tonight. Opening quarter, Jacob Hirschberger decides to take it himself. He goes up the field for a first down and more. The senior with a gain of 18 yards. Same drive, and the Mustangs are within the 10-yard line. Hirschberger looks for a target, but his pass gets picked off by Antonio Gray in the end zone. Grove takes over on the 20-yard line. The dogs are trying to get on the board, but that won't do. Brilliant Kimmett takes the hit. CG takes a loss of six on the play. We're still scoreless in the second quarter, and Kimmett once again showing off his defensive skills. He picks off the pass. Alan East takes over. They go on to win this game, seven to nothing. Going up State Route 81, the Ada Bulldogs invade Harmon Field to battle the Pirates. The dogs are trying to bounce back from a week four loss against Lipsick, while the Pirates look to get over 500 for the first time this season. Bluffton student section really pumping it up prior to the third quarter, which is where we pick up the action. Bluffton up 21-7. Garrett Bogart breaks out of the pocket. He finds a target in Braden Jordan, and Jordan picks up the first down and more. He goes as far as a 23-yard line for the Pirates before he gets brought down. Pirates looking to generate some offense, but the Bodocs still playing some defense. Grant Preston takes down the QB for a sack and a loss of five on the play. The Bodocs defense not letting up. This time it's Lester Amos who brings down the QB. The Bodocs take over on downs. But Lufton would regain possession. Bogarts hand it over to Griffin Stackhouse, and a sophomore takes it into the end zone for a TD. Bluffton takes a 28-7 lead. They go on to win, 31-7. Thanks, Tony. Lipsick's the only other team to start out 1-0 in NWC play this fall. The Vikings have alternated wins and losses so far. They try to break that pattern with a second straight win tonight, hosting Spencerville. Schools in the second quarter. Quinn Schrader has no one open, so he keeps it and bulls his way across the line. Lipsick jumps out to a 7-0 lead, so Spencerville has to form a response. On a fourth and goal, Josh Headline drops it to Reggie Jones. He gets his legs taken out, but not before he houses it. We're tied at sevens. However, on the very next Lipsick series, Schrader gets out of the pocket, looks downfield, lets it fly. Estevan Carrillo is on the receiving end, into the front corner of the end zone. Lipsick wins 55-14. Crestview suffers their first loss of the season last Friday against Allen East, so the 3 and 1 Knights enter tonight's road game at 1 and 3 Jefferson with the same winless league record that the Jeff Cats are sporting. Second half, the Knights trail 7 0 on their opening possession, but the ball is given to Jarrett Harding and he follows his blocker, sits a man down, and moves the sticks. Harding has Crestview down to the 30 yard line. Later in that 
that same drive. They go for it on a fourth and three. Turns out to be a good call. Isaac Klein. Oh, boy. There's another Klein at Crestview. He streaks into the end zone. Just like that, we're all knotted up at sevens. But Jefferson responds on their next drive. Andrew Miller picks away at the right side. He has room to run. That's a first down for the Jeff Cats inside the 25-yard line. Two plays later, quarterback Trent Teeman calls his own number. It takes not one, but two defenders to drag him down. The damage is done, though, with the Jeff Cats now at the doorstep. And on the next play, they kick, kick your door down. Teeman does the honors. Jefferson wins 21-7. In the Blanchard Valley Conference, there's a showdown between teams who have yet to lose a league game. Pandora Gilboa hasn't lost at all since their week one setback in Columbus Grove. They play a fourth straight home game hosted a McComb team. Its only loss was in week two at Marion Local. Third quarter, Andrew Swisher punches it in. McComb moves up 19-14. And then they go for two to make it an even seven-point lead. It's a reverse. It was going to be a reverse pass, but with no one open, Brad Meals has to keep it and fights his way to the goal line. It's 21-14 Panthers. Now it's PG's turn. Fourth quarter, Carson Meyer deep to Aiden Morris. That that's the right guy to have on the other end. The snag in the end zone ties the game at 21s. And when the Rockets go on defense, Morris is still determined to be the one catching the passes. The star junior goes up and picks it off. He gets his team the rock back, and they capitalize. Meyer to Colin Harris. Tough catch for another Pandora Gilboa touchdown. The home team leads 28-21, but it doesn't last. On McCombs next possession, Grant Dishon connects with Camden Glazer. And look out, Ned. He's coming right for us. Glazer goes 65 yards for the answer. McCombs wins a great one, 35-28. Around the Valley tonight, Arlington improves to 5-0 at the midway point of the season. The Red Devils keep Van Lue winless 55-12. Riverdale's 3-0 in the league with a 20-16 win at Van Buren. Liberty Benton hangs 70 in a shutout of Corey Rawson. Meanwhile, Arcadia plays host to now former BVC foe North Baltimore, who's independent this fall before both they and Corey Rawson move to the NWCC next year. Skins win 15-12. We need to take our first break here on Football Friday Night. When we come back, more conference action, including teams from the WBL and MAC. Stick around. Welcome back. WBL action next on the slate. Let's head to Van Wert. Both teams coming in to play at 3-1 overall. Cougars coming off a heartbreaking loss on a block punt that went for a touchdown against Wapak. After a 3 and out from the Rough Riders to open the game, Cougars with their first possession of the game. And very first play, Aiden Pratt finds Connor Campbell in the middle of the field. He turns on the Jets and drags a defender with him into the end zone. Just like that, Cougars up 7 to nothing. St. Mary's in the responding drive. They give the ball to Braden Sullivan, and he breaks through. He gets the first down and more and gets his team near midfield. Two plays later, this time it's going to be the fullback, Aiden Hinkle, getting the ball, and he bursts through the line of scrimmage and turns on the second gear. No one's going to deny him in the end zone. He ties it up at seven apiece. Next drive for the Cougars. They march down the field and are inside the 10-yard line here. Pratt is going to hand it off to Braylon Parker, who finishes the job and gets Van Wert in the lead right back 14 to 7. Van Wert goes on to win this one 70 to 41. Elida is the only undefeated team overall in the Western Buckeye League. The 4-0 Bulldogs tonight host a second straight game. After starting with three on the road, they tangle with Salina, who's won two straight since an 0-2 start. The Bulldog bands make music side by side at halftime, but the team still do battle. The Road Dogs showing off the defense that has them up 17-0 in the third. Carter Allstatter, Jack Hassett, and Caden Merlin meet the ball carry in their backfield. But later, when Salina has to punt, the home dogs come up big. Wyatt Klatt comes bursting through and gets his hand on it. That thing flutters harmlessly out of bounds. He has great field position, but they can't do anything with it. With the starting QB out injured, Landon Ackley picks off his backup, and it's tough sledding for the boys in black on offense all night. Timothy Nowitzki corrals the quarterback from behind and drags him to the ground on third down. Salina hands Eli to their first loss, 17-3. Neighbors collide this evening in Wapakoneta. Of course, Harmon Field was the site of that wild punt block victory a week ago. The Redskins tonight look for a fourth straight W, hosting 1-3 Shawnee. You're looking at Wapak's second play from scrimmage, and it's a good one. Jace now hits the hole, and not one Indian ever lays so much as a fingertip on him. The junior heads right past us, 51 yards to pay dirt. It's 7-0 skins. The defense came to play as well. On third down, Austin Brown slows the man down. Joey Truesdale, Connor Mextro, and Mikey Lee make sure he never gets to his mark. Shawnee has to punt, which means their defense has to deal with Naus again. This time he throws a stiff arm, tiptoes the sideline, and picks up 18. The home team marches right down the field, and Naus finds the house once again. This time it's just a three-yard run, but it still counts for six. Make it 14 to nothing. 
on the skins next possession it's Kyle Beach's turn to make the highlight the junior kicker cans the field goal from 43 out he makes a pair of three balls tonight and Wapak wins 27 zip OG Titans traveling to bat to face the Wildcats one of these two would leave their first conference victory tonight overall victory on the season as well looking for those how about some defense screenplay and Blaine Albright with the huge hit Ruled incomplete there. Fast flashing defense as well. No tackle, swallowing up the run. That's what they're supposed to do. Good tackle there by Slot. But then the Titans are able to break one. Cy Rump making guys miss. Nice blocks in there as well. He takes this inside the 10 all the way down to the 5 and knocked out of bounds. Same drive. Rump gets it again and he makes it count again for the score. OG is going to win this one 14 to nothing. Just one more score out of the WBL. Defiance defends. Fred Brown Stadium against Kenton, Kenton winning 42-6. to six. We are set for our second and final break here on Football Friday Night. When we come back, we have one more league in play, and it's a big one. Undefeated teams square off in the state's best small school conference after this. Welcome back. Mac action tonight between two of the conference's best as undefeated clash with New Bremen heading to Marion Local, and that matchup is our Football Friday Night Spotlight game. The Football Friday Night Spotlight Game is brought to you by CCR Realtors. Marion Local offense averaging 37 a game. Meanwhile, New Bremen defense holding opponents to 3.5. Something's got to give, and it would tonight. Second quarter, third and four on New Bremen's six-yard line. Marion Local Kyle Ott hands it off to Darren Meyer, who's inched forward just enough for the first down at the one-yard line. Next play, Tate Hess hands off to Meyer, who rips through the defense for the touchdown. 20 to nothing, Marion Local in complete control. New Bremen getting something going. However, David Holman over the middle to Dylan Bambauer down to the 15-yard line. That's a 16-yard pickup for the tight end and a first down. They would settle for a field goal. But then the dagger coming from special teams here. Ensuing kickoff, Todd Rue Lousy, who takes it to the 68 yards up to the 32-yard line. One man away from a house call, and he stopped. Flyers, however, win this one 38-16 and move to 5-0. Let's head to St. Henry at the Wally Post Athletic Complex. Cold water, undefeated. However, they were the road dog in this game, looking for their fifth win with Marion Local close on their tail. First quarter on third and second. On two there, Curtis Puthoff with the ball. He finds a gap in cold water's defense. Puthoff goes in for 10 yards for the first down. But St. Henry turns it over on downs. Still in the first. On third and 10, Marcel... Blazing game, chucks the ball to Curtis Dewar. Dewar takes it 27 for the first down. Less than five to play in the quarter and fourth and four. Blazing game hits Braylon Har Harlemert, and it's a touchdown for the road team. And the Cavs crack the scoreboard for six points. However, they would miss the extra point. Coldwater with the ball once more. Blazing game plows through the Redskins' defense. The Cavs double their lead. They go on to win this one big 41-7. to seven. Around the map we go defending D5 state champions for sales bouncing back from their first loss of the year when in 41 to nothing at Parkway Minster beats Anna 39 to 21. And there's a good one in Fort Recovery with the home team edging St. John's 21 to 19. In the Northwest Central, Waynesfield Goshen improves to 5 and 0 with a 49-12 victory over Elgin. Harden Northern's 2 and 0 in the league following a 47 nothing shutout of Perry. Ridgemont also 2 and 0 in the NWCC blanking Ridgedale 24 zip and USV Rams crest line 86 to 8. Central Buckeye Conference, it's rivalry night at Indian Lake, but this one goes the way of the road team. Bell Fountain wins 48-14. Ben Logan loses at home 35-14 against Tecumseh. In the TRC, Lehman Catholic has no trouble with Miami East, 22-9. Riverside wins a good one at Northridge, 28-22. Non-league ball, Fort Loramie also drives down to Dayton and also comes home victorious, 34-22 over Dunbar. In the Green Meadows, Wayne Trace aces their test in Hicksville, 40-6. Paulding also wins on the road, 29-10 at Fairview. And in the mighty NWO, AL, the Patrick Henry Patriots fight, fight with all their might, blanking Evergreen 26 to nothing. Well, that's how we wrap up week five here on Football Friday Night. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks to everyone here who helps us put the show on each and every week.